You're still watching the, the breakfast. We just had a brief discussion on our first hot topic with regards to the introduction of electric vehicles in Lagos. And our guest remains Olari, Olariwaju Olaboye, software engineer and coding instructor, who is here live with me. And now we're going to our second topic, which is the development of web and app development programming in Nigeria. That's actually his specialty. I just dragged him into discussing that electric buses uh, issue with us. Well, thank you so much for, for your time here again. Yeah. All right, so tell me, why did you go into web design and how did you go into it? Okay, well, uh, I think the question is, is um, I dried it. Um, why did I go into it? Okay, let me put it this way. Um, I see web as web is um, the gateway to connection. Mm -hmm. Whatever connection we have on planet Earth right now that makes um, someone from Nigeria to talk in real time with, um, with someone in the US, it's um, that connection, the backbone is, is the web. That's why it's a web because it makes everybody become interconnected kind of. So, um, so the why? Um, personally, I have a personal reason for, for, for coming into, into um, web development. So, but my own journey in tech majorly started from, the, um, from fixing laptops. Okay. Um, so I started from fixing laptops. Um, and I remember around 11 years ago when I was learning that my um, instructor then told me, um, you seem very, very sharp. I think you should try your hands on programming, on software development. Mm -hmm. I didn't take it so serious. So 2013, I was in university. I tried. Um, it didn't work out because I was studying for economics. Um, then towards 2015, I decided, oh, and at that point, I already have, my grades were already set. I was already on the first class, and I'm like, okay, it seems this is the right time. And I was um, getting involved in a lot of social entrepreneurship um, programs, going for a lot of conferences, leadership trainings all around Nigeria and some outside um, back then. So um, I then decided, and I saw a lot of things, amazing things many people are doing in that sector. Um, you know, I think around 2014, 2015, 2016 mm -hmm. was when a lot of um, tech um, inclined platforms started springing up. How would you describe in, in that industry in Nigeria today? Um, I would describe it as um, growing. I, I, I'll use the word growing. I, there, there are many things still not going so well. And, and of course, there are many things going well. You understand? And all these are on. A, a lot of factors. So I went into the why shortly is because I wanted to build a particular idea I have on social entrepreneurship. So that was why I fully went into coding, in learning to code for web in 2015. So, but so here we are today. So that is the why. The how was um, I first tried to reach out to different people. You know, I told you I go for all these. Um, trainings around. So I met, uh, I've met some guys that were already into programming or were si uh, computer science major students mm. in school. So I already started talking to them. Um, so some of them were recommending courses for me online. So I actually started by using online courses, yeah, I'm, learning I'm, from I'm, online I'm, courses. I'm talking then. about the software industry, if you could describe the situation of the software industry in the country. Yeah, I, I feel... How big a thing is it? I know that our youth uh, tech savvy. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a big deal. You, you know, for instance, um, you, you remember back in the days, like for instance, when I just got into secondary school, you have to enter long queues to pay your, your school fee. You know, a lot of things we have to do by having to go through the manual process. Mm. And here we are today, this sector that we have. So for instance, uh, FinTech is still, our FinTech in Nigeria, we still have some things in Nigeria that even some advanced countries still don't have in their financial sector. Like the real time ability for me to send money to you and you get value immediately and you don't have to wait for settlement mm. 
mm. um, because of the idea of switch that our banks have come together to to put together and uh, so so uh, in that in terms of the tech space in nigeria it has i think it's a space that has really brought a lot of ease that has really pushed us outside, um, forward rather, um, even much more than some advanced countries Do we there. export software packages? Um, do we export software packages? Um, I think that is, that is a dicey question to answer, but the answer is yes. So the reason is we've, we've had um, or we have um, startups that actually um, build softwares for, for other con uh, companies to, to use. So you have people like Zoho that, that are trying to um, create maybe, let me say, some, there, there are some kind of toned down um, versions of Microsoft packages, you understand? And they are trying to offer them both within and outside Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So they are not the only one. There are many other guys that are trying to build. So for instance, you see Ejumia. Ejumia has tried to open their platform to many other African countries, and they've even tried to get themselves listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, uh, I'm not sure how good they are fearing right now, but I know they did. So all those kind of steps, they are steps in the right direction. So I believe Nigeria, of course, they are, they are, they are, they are products from, and even many companies out there, like outside of Nigeria, mm -hmm. if you look at their core technical guys, most of them have either an African or Nigerian background. So even when the so that's why I said the question is dicey. Nigerian brains are of course building softwares that are being used all over the world, no doubt about that. But, but are we are those, maximizing? Yeah, are those knowledge uh, as a company being mm. owned or being patented by Nigerian-owned companies? Then that is an entirely new conversation because a lot of people will even tell you most guys that are that are getting funding are eventually losing. Or out sense. on their company yeah they are losing out because they are selling their shares out to all these guys that they are raising funds you know those people are not giving them those funds for charity oh, no, yeah. they are, so they, they are partially dissolving their their own stake their own ownership in those companies so that means over time it might eventually not be a nigerian company in the end by the time you get a lot of funding and maybe the founder eventually say I'm selling out this guy. We saw, we saw that with Paystack. They sold out to Stripe. You understand? So, Could that narrative have changed if there were probably better support from the federal government? Um, Do they have enough support from the I, government? I, I, I don't um, specifically want to say it's only the government. So I, I try to look at it this way. So I, as a person, I look at... Uh, so, for instance, you look at the America as a whole. Most of their big billionaires, what are the sectors they are putting their money into? Mm. But look at us in Africa, most of our big guys, they are still doing the buying and selling businesses. They're not looking at, let's do a business of scalability virtually, not entirely a physical scalability kind of stuff. So, mm. so when you have people that, that is their own orientation of how their business should work. Yeah. And to an extent, it works for them because they are having a considerable amount of success doing that. So I feel, the, so how, how are the big billionaires, how are they keen into these ideas, into yeah. investing into these companies? That is what I will be asking because the government, the government is there, but the, the, the top doesn't always stay forever. Mm -hmm. so, so having the government to manage some things sustainably over a long period of time, um, I don't think any government of the world has really proven itself so good to, to that extent. So, that but have we, we've, from what you can, you're saying, we've still not been able to tap into the software industry in the country. That's yeah, I feel, yeah I, feel, I feel the, the, the rich guys in the private the privately rich guys, the mm. big guys, are not really, I don't think they are really pushing their funds into, into those things as much as they should. Because I think they will, because for instance, if they, if they put money into these guys, they already know the landscape mm -hmm. of the African or the Nigerian system, how the Nigerians think. How they how they approach uh, when uh, what are the conditions under which they actually bring out their money to pay for something? So they have those knowledge, and these other guys they have the idea of what is the new way to sell to these people. You understand? So so I think I, I would take that as a bigger force mm. than a a public sector slash 
those because um, there is also something over time if you try to do that it might breed cronism so because uh, it might be a case of uh, my own company only gets um, contracts because my own person is the one in power mm -hmm. so it doesn't really matter how good i do my stuff mm -hmm. so even if i don't do it well the government will make people to patronize me so i think we should look we should we should pinch the private sector guys that the rich guys mm -hmm. uh, billionaires in the private in the private um, sector to invest they should be the one we should but really be pushing why do you think pushing. they do not seem to see that viability to invest and uh, diversify especially as we're looking at diversifying the economy well, I, I try not to assume one thing. I try not to assume that they don't know. I, don't, I try not to assume that. So what that. then is the problem? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it might just be a personal decision, you know. So, for instance, if you, if you, if you have uh, something, and so for instance now, look at the banks. They, they have avenue through which they can keep money with the bank, with the central bank overnight, and they earn some interest, even though not as much hugely on it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at times the, the CBN too will be like, I'm not sure I want these guys to be keeping the money. I want them to be actually sending out this money. You know, um, if it's easy to get some, some, to get some profits from not doing so much, from not taking so much risk, and you are so sure you get back your fund, you might just want to do that instead of trying to go into, because one thing you just can't take out of it is even though they are prospect, it's still a high-risk business. Mm. Doing all these um, tech-inclined uh, uh, businesses in, in Nigeria. Because even at times, you, you wonder how many people actually pay for some of these apps. Because you know, um, someone like Ekuda came um, years back. They do free, uh, free transaction charges. You know, what came to my mind is, Somebody actually pays for it, you know. I studied economics, no free lunch, mm -hmm. not even in Freetown. So <laughs> it means, so, but I understand why they might be doing that. So, for instance, if I'm a CUDA, I might be thinking, um, or if I'm a business person, uh, I might be thinking, instead of me spending 25 naira advertising, targeting someone all around yeah. to come and use my hub, why don't I say that transaction is free? And I pay the 25 naira within my own application because what does that do for me? That makes my revenue to stay within me. So it makes me to also um, realize more revenue within me instead of realizing expenses. You know, I'll still I'll still spend that money. I'll still spend that 25 naira that I'm paying or the 50 naira I'm paying as their transaction charges that I'm paying on their behalf. But I might be thinking it's better for me to have that as part of my own uh, numbers, my own balance sheets yeah. instead of paying it to a Facebook or to an Instagram in order to target users to now download my app. And they might not want to download when they see that they still have to pay this transaction charge. And it, so over time, they have to back down, you know? So when you talk about those kind of plans with um, the private sector guys, they might be thinking, why do I need to wait for a long time for me to invest in your CUDA, in your um, small microfinance fintech businesses in your small agritech business and i could just be running within my space and over that time i'll still make i'll still have made more more returns on my money you know everybody we are all out for for our own good it's not our, anybody's benevolence that uh, we we do help to to one another except maybe we are family members though <laughs> all right let's talk about coding okay. you are a coding instructor it's not been long we heard, we started hearing coding, coding, coding. Mm -hmm. um, tell us, what can you tell us about coding and how it's been received? Okay, well, uh, I'll just put it this way. Um, in a simple term, it's just your, you learning or knowing how to give instructions to computers. Not, may, not really through the... So, so there, are, there are two ways to look at your computer that you have out there. There's the GUI which is the graphic UI, which is the, the sites you and I can see, you know, where we take our mouse around, click things. So those are the GUI instructions we're mm -hmm. giving. So there can also be command-based instructions that you can give to the computer. So writing code make you to give those command-based instru instructions, not really through the GUI. So, so coding is basically how you write in a language that the computer understands. Mm -hmm and give it instructions on what to do. Okay, so children are being targeted for this uh, in schools, especially during holidays. 
um, have you in any way synergized with schools as an instructor? And are you seeing schools embracing it and doing what they should do to catch them young? Yeah, I think so. I must commend some parents and I must commend uh, some schools. Uh, some schools are trying to bring in at least, even if it is some um, element of basic coding, because the thing is this, like I said, it's you writing instruction for the computers. Mm -hmm. So it's more about you knowing how the computers think or how the computers should think and giving it the right instruction. Mm -hmm. You understand? So um, there are schools that are trying to teach just basic computer logics, um, building their own um, small computer laboratories um, and uh, advising um, students to come there during their leisure to, to use those infrastructures. So I must comment, and some students, some parents are actually enrolling their children to learn. I have, so because I run a um, tech training school, a tech academy, and um, I also uh, train people, mentor people virtually, and I've trained people from many countries um, in the world. So um, I must comment the parents. So some people are actually doing it. I've, I've seen parents that will be like, oh, this is my son. He just completed his um, work. Mm -hmm. I, I want him to enroll with you. And a lot of them, they are doing fine. They, they even, you know, there's even, there's even always a new way to look at these things. Because when you train someone new at times, they, they are just kind of more agile than you have. Mm -hmm. So their own ability to, to, to find. So for instance, I came in here today with one of my uh, staffs that work with me, I actually trained him. He was technically my first um, student. I trained him five years ago when I was in service, mm. in NYC service. So, and today he knows some things I don't even know. <laughs> so even though I am meant to be the more experienced guy, mm. so, so it's, it is like that. And, and as, a, as a tech um, training school, at my own training school, Pantera Tech School, we are trying to, we are already shortlisting some schools here in Lagos that we're looking at collaborating with over the summer holiday so we can give a uh, basic introduction to technology um, skill mm. to the uh, to the students. We are trying to focus majorly on the GS3 and the SS3 guys because we know they tend to have longer time mm -hmm. to, to learn stuff. So we're, yeah. we're looking at teaching them around basic graphic design, um, basics of uh, product design, and basics of um, web design. So we believe those are things you can still at least have an idea of within a month. And you never can tell because even for this particular guy I mentioned, I, I just trained him like to the basics and I left. Mm -hmm. I left and like a year or two later, he reached out to me. He's been working as a software engineer um, as a result of what I did to him two years ago. So he reached out to me in I think 2020 and I'm like, oh wow. And that was how we, we started talking back before he started working with me. All right. I also notice that children in primary and elementary school, I mean, primary schools and, uh, yeah, primary school students, uh, pupils have also been taught or are being taught. Is that a way to go? Yeah, I think it's, it's the way to go. So, for instance, when you go online and you, you, see, you see all these young kids from, from India, from China, from U.S., they'll tell you they've been coding since they were eight. Mm -hmm. so, that, so the thing is, for the young guys that are coding, it's even better because they are not trying to get into coding in order to put food on their table. They are going in there to, to learn the deep they knowledge. They have a passion for so, it. Yeah, the passion. It's exciting Yeah, so, so they get the deep knowledge. They, get, they, build up, they build up what I tend to think. Of. So, for instance, I don't see programming as you trying to know all the codes, all the syntax on top of your head. I think it's more around knowing how to think clearly about what you want to do. So those kind of people, they, they started their youthful years um, putting their minds towards thinking clearly mm. about building stuff. So over time, by the time they are 14, they are already gurus. A 25-year-old that is trying to learn, before you could catch up with them, you will have to learn for another five, seven years. So, so I think that is the better way to go because it just makes you ahead of your time. Because by the time you are 15, you started coding from, from eight. By the time you are 15, you could even know more than five programming languages already, more than 10 programming languages already because you've had a lot of time and there was no pressure to, to build one big Facebook application for a client or something. Uh, I think it's, it's a really um, good uh, step in the right direction. Yeah, we, we've come to realize that children, especially 
in China and Korea and Japan, you find children inventing things, uh, <laughs> phones, laptops, and all of that. But that doesn't seem to be the case here in Nigeria. What would you attribute, attribute that to? Well, Nigeria, Nigeria and Africa is, is, is that easy. So let, let's look at it this, uh, from here. So let's even look at um, our language for a start. Yeah. So how many, so I've met people that I think they are smart people, like, and I'm sure you would have too, like, they might not be, they might, some of them might not even be educated, like the formal education, but I believe your intelligence at times is about how you think. So I think Africa as a whole, how, but people are coming back now. People are realizing that um, knowledge is more than just knowing how to speak good English. Mm -hmm. At times, so you look at how much of our curriculum is even being taught in our own native language. Mm -hmm. So you look at those guys, they, they wake up. So for instance, I've trained people from China. And some of them... You've trained people from China? Yeah. Through, uh, through virtual platforms, I've helped them with their, with their, with their um, work uh, task when they, when they get uh, hanged on them. Uh, even people, people from US, from, from UK, from, other, from many, from all over the places. So let me come back to, to what I was saying. So you look at, you look at them, they, they tend to conceptualize all these things in their own language. So, so it's, it's easier for them. But I think it's a first problem for an African child. Because even if you have some things you have in your mind, for you to even easily communicate it to yourself inside of yourself, it's like a problem because most of our curriculum, you first have to learn English. And even look at many big books, best-selling books. They, convert, they, they translate them to other languages. But really, will you see an African, uh, what is it called, saying, OK, I'm trying to convert uh, a book on physics. I'm trying to convert it into Yoruba. I'm trying to teach people my physics in Yoruba. You know, I think that is... Language barrier? I think there is that language barrier. We might not be saying it, but it is there. Because how you, even how you pray, if, if you look at the angle of religion, hmm. to pray in your first language itself is easier than for you to... So, for instance, I have friends they might be struggling with English. I'll tell them, if you really want to speak better, I think, start thinking in English. It's mm -hmm. as easy as that, because when you still try to think in your own local, it's, it's, it's an issue on its own. So I, I see the language there as a problem for why it's harder for people to really... And secondly, I'll talk more, I'll also try to say infrastructure more. Infrastructure and um, I think the average exposure. So mm -hmm. the average exposure of most, maybe it's because of the economic level that we operate in, mm -hmm. um, is we operate on survival most times. So when you're trying to operate on survival, sitting down to conceptualize ideas and put them together is tougher. So, you know, there, there are even some children that will be trying to play with things. Their parents will be like, no, should you like assignments, master? Sorry for speaking in Yoruba. <laughs> no, don't, like, don't so, be sorry. Yeah, it is. So, so, we so, shouldn't be sorry. So the, that's language. how they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll talk. So they'll, they'll tend to see anything that is not like that planned academic route as not something productive. It is until recent time that even some parents are realizing that even running can be a big deal. Mm -hmm. If you give the children the right training, if, um, even playing football. You know how many people, their parents beat the hell out of them because they were trying to play football. Yeah. So I think all those things, it's not only in tech, it's just our general attitude to this thing. All those things, and we, so we don't try to create the enabling environment when people are trying to do some of these good things. And we so, also probably need to do something about the curricula. Yeah, uh, yeah, I believe. Uh, yeah, the I believe so. System in the yeah, but system. but but I don't. But I don't want to talk too much about the curriculum, the academic sector curriculum, because one thing is, you know, academic sector curriculum. One thing is, it's a profit first system, whether you take it or not. And so far, the government is not doing, is not doing their own properly. And many people have to go the private sector way. It's going to be profit first. So they will have to do the bare minimum. So you can't expect that you really get a really good coding um, knowledge. So parents will have to take so, that. Yeah. So even, no, I, the even, the, even the individual, mm. the individual, the, the, the students, the children themselves, 
they have to so i think the, that's where the exposure comes in leaving them to to move around within the good realm of trying to fix things yeah, in the fix house, things in the house things out of uh, yeah, out of the, the out of the norm. Things. Yeah, just, yeah, and just so over time, when the interest build, mm. even you don't have to run after them to. So, for instance, when I fell sick, when I was seven, my boss, when I fell sick back then, he still came to tease me on my sick bed that should I bring your system? Do you still want to write some code? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, boss. He was just laughing at me. You know, it's it's just the passion to want. So at that point, when you can take them to guide them to that level, you don't even have to do anything. So. I know of a guy that he's learned coding before he, he got into the university. When he was in the university, he's already a senior engineer now, mm -hmm. like myself. Um, he, he practically paid his school fee all through from the work. He, he has built house for his own parents, like for himself, that his parents now live mm -hmm. in. You know, just because they gave him that, that early um in what's it called yeah and, yeah and it's still less than 25 a nigerian mm -hmm. guy that i know you yeah. understand it's still less than 25 maybe it'll be 25 this year or next year mm. so so that is that is the thing when when you create the enabling environment well of course the government too can help because when it comes to the curriculum if you really want to get all these schools the government is the one that can really do it the tell, tell the uh, ministry of education we want the schools to put so so standard a, a x amount of the time in school spent in school has to be used to ICT, teach computer the yeah ict should be rejigged to include all of those things and made mandatory yeah i think i think from that perspective the government can really help us mm -hmm. but a lot now lies on the parents. I think the parents, the parents have to guide their children, right? You cannot expect because the schools is they are they are they are meant for profits. Take it or you leave it. So they will only do the bare minimum. Except for, for the public schools. All right. Thank you so much, Olari Waju Olaboye, software engineer and coding instructor. It's been very very exciting just uh, listening to you and learning so much more about coding and the software industry. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. You're still watching the program, The Breakfast. We'll take a break to come back with sports news.